Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutors feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. According to Joyner, should be recognized by doctors as a medical state of deconditioning that might be better assisted with a modest, supervised exercise program rather than as symptoms that should be treated with medicines. It may seem contradictory, but exercise can help you battle weariness. But don't forget about Newton Isaac, not Fig. When a body is at rest, it remains at rest. The impact of the United States' plans to withdraw New Delhi's privileged trade status, which enables duty-free access to $5.6 billion in goods, has been understated by India. President Donald Trump has asked the U.S. Trade Representative's office to remove India from a program that offers its special trade status claiming that India has not satisfied the U.S. that it will allow equitable and reasonable access to its markets. The Generalized System of Preferences, GSP, which cuts tariffs on exports from roughly 120 developing nations, benefited India the most in 2017. In New Delhi, India's trade secretary told reporters that the country had no intentions to put retaliatory tariffs on American goods.
Late Saturday, the United States and South Korea declared that their annual large-scale joint military exercises will come to an end as part of diplomatic efforts to achieve complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. The Pentagon stated in a statement that Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan and South Korean Minister of National Defense decided to stop the key resolve and full eagle exercises in a phone call on Saturday. The announcement comes three days after a summit in Vietnam between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un concluded without a deal to end the nuclear standoff. According to the Associated Press, Seoul's Defense Ministry issued a similar statement. We may consider living life on the edge to be thrilling. Yeah, that's me, is an image we enjoy. On the verge of something big. Woo hoo, it's become a popular perspective on life. However, as you can see, even highways have markings that give safety margins while driving. We'll end up in the ditch if we go over one side. We risk being killed if we cross the line in the middle. And we appreciate such lines because they assist us in staying safe. We don't often realize how important lines are in keeping us safe. I'm not proud of it, but I ignored my limits for the first 20 years of my working life. Most of the time, I was physically miserable. I know I have boundaries and that I've reached them. I used to tell myself, but I'm going to ignore them and see if for how long I can get away with it. Glennie claims that hearing is a sort of touch, and that everyone experiences sound differently, whether deaf or not. Evelyn doesn't wear shoes or socks when she performs. This allows her to experience the music via her body and the floor. Normally, percussionists play in the orchestra's back row, but Evelyn plays in the front row so she can lip read the conductor's signals. Glennie has stated that she does not want an operation to cure her deafness since she enjoys being herself and does not want to modify her working style. She, like many other brave people, tries her hardest to help others. She has made a difference in the lives of many deaf youngsters by providing them with the opportunity to learn a musical instrument.
Hey Sahan, you are looking so much happy. What's the matter? Yeah, Tamim, you were right. I am so much happy now. Actually, I was talking with my father about my aim in life. That's why I am so happy now. So you were you talking about your choice of career in the future? Yeah, I was. What's that? I want to become a doctor. From my childhood, I wanted to become one. I talked with my dad today about it and he has inspired me a lot. That's very good. Why do you want to become a doctor? I want to serve the poor people. Actually, I am from a village and I have seen people there lot of people not getting enough treatment and they are dying without medicine and proper treatment. I want to serve people like them. Your thinking is so much good and I hope you will become a doctor and serve the peoples. Doctors are an asset to a country. We need more and better doctors. Yeah, thanks for your words. So have you any aim or any career choice? Yeah, I want to become a banker. As you know I am studying commerce and accounting in my favorite subject. I think I am passionate about it. George Bush Sr. and his son, George W. Bush, both previous Republican presidents of the United States, have urged Americans to reject racism and anti-Semitism. It's being interpreted as a response to Donald Trump's remarks regarding who was to blame for Saturday's skirmishes in Charlottesville. When Mr. Trump accused both anti-racist protesters and white supremacists, he generated outrage. Heather Heyer, a protester, was slain. Her mother claimed at her burial service that the killer intended to silence her daughter but ended up amplifying her. President Donald Trump has announced the elimination of two advisory committees comprised primarily of prominent corporate executives. Authorities in the Spanish city of Barcelona said a vehicle deliberately drove into them at a popular tourist market, killing 13 people and injuring 80 more. The vehicle sped through the city center's Las Ramblas before being abandoned by the driver, who fled. As police looked for suspects, hundreds of visitors and locals sought refuge in stores and churches. Two of them, including a Moroccan male, were apprehended hours later. Another suspect was killed in a police gunfight on the outskirts of the city, according to Spanish media. Mariano Rajoy, the Spanish prime minister, who is on his way to Barcelona, says he will coordinate security measures, 
while Carles Puigdemont, the Catalan president, has urged people to band together. The common plastic bag can take hundreds of years to decompose due to the indefinite time it takes to break down. Every bag that ends up in the country's woods endangers wildlife's natural progression. The bag's chances of harmlessly dissolving are exceedingly minimal because to the slow breakdown rate. Plastic bags are accountable for the suffocation deaths of woodland animals as well as the inhibition of soil nutrients all over the planet. Plastic bag litter on the ground has the potential to kill people over and over again. One bag has the potential to kill one animal unintentionally every three months owing to unintended digesting or inhalation, according to estimates. First and foremost, family members, politicians, historians, and civil rights campaigners are paying respect to Colin Powell, an 84-year-old American military and political leader who died on Monday. Powell has an impressive resume that began with his service in the Reserve Officers Training Corps while still in college. Powell had earned the highest rank in the ROTC at the time, and he continued to progress his military career from there. Powell was a four-star general in the United States Army after serving in combat during the Vietnam War. Powell became America's first black national security advisor during Ronald Reagan's presidency.
The new year is a time for making New Year's resolutions. Most of us could mentally build formidable lists of do's and don'ts. Year after year, the same old favorites resurface with tedious regularity. We pledge to get up earlier every morning, eat less, spend more time with the kids, do a million and one household chores, be friendly to those we don't like, drive safely, and walk the dog every day. Certain undertakings have proven to be beyond our reach in the past. It is only because we have so often experienced the frustration that comes with failure that we continue to be deep-rooted liars. The majority of us fail in our attempts at self-improvement because our plans are too grandiose and we never have the time to put them into action. Thousands of ants crawled up the trunk of my prized peach tree last summer, and I spent days in the garden watching them. On a sheltered side of the house, the tree has grown up against a warm well. I'm very proud of it, not just because it has weathered numerous harsh winters, but also because it yields delicious peaches on occasion. During the summer, I saw that the tree's leaves were starting to wilt. On the underside of the leaves, there were clusters of tiny insects known as aphis. They were visited by a large colony of ants, who gathered a honey-like substance from them. I immediately started an experiment that, despite failing to get rid of the ants, kept me busy. The United States claims to have made headway in addressing some of the shipping issues that have clogged the worldwide supply chain. That chain is not under the jurisdiction of the government. Although the Biden administration is largely made up of private port operators, trucking companies, railroads, and warehouses, it is supporting a plan for the Port of Los Angeles to operate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and for large companies like Walmart, Home Depot, and UPS to ship more goods at night. The Port of Los Angeles in California is one of the busiest ports on the planet, with 40% of all containers shipped to America passing through it and the Port of Long Beach.
Ordinary public hospitals will also employ computers. A doctor will be able to diagnose the nature of a patient's ailment by connecting a machine to his system. Similarly, machines might be employed to maintain track of a patient's medical history and update it. As a result, doctors will have rapid access to a wealth of information that will aid them in their work. Bookkeepers and accountants could be freed from tedious clerical tasks as well. Machines could completely automate the arduous work of compiling and validating lists or data. Computers are the most efficient servants man has ever had, and the ways they may be exploited to better our lives are endless. However, first and foremost, the U.S. government has released its monthly employment data. It's one indicator of how well the economy is performing overall. The most recent report was for the month of September, and it was a letdown. Last month, economists predicted that 479,000 jobs would be added. According to the U.S. Labor Department, the actual number was less than half of that. It was the second month in a row that the number of jobs created to the American economy was significantly lower than experts had projected, and no one understands why. Many economists continue to be concerned about the coronavirus pandemic and the disease's Delta version. We live in a time when miracles and wonders abound. The age of science has been coined, and several parts of our lives that have altered over the centuries have been attributed to science. This is entirely correct, yet it is only one side of the story. On the other hand, as we have progressed in technology, something fundamental to mankind has been left behind. Empathy and compassion for our fellow humans are steadily eroding as a result of the onslaught of our ever-evolving lifestyles, bolstered by the wonders of technology breakthroughs. Take the Internet as an example. However, it has drastically restricted genuine contact with teachers, friends, and elders.
Kenya's election commission announced just a few minutes ago that incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta had won Tuesday's presidential election. The opposition, which has accused the results of being rigged, has rejected them. The process, according to an opposition spokeswoman, is a charade. The verbal spat between Washington and Pyongyang over North Korea's nuclear program has alarmed world leaders. North Korea accused President Trump of bringing the country to the brink of nuclear war after he said the U.S. military was locked and loaded. Russia, China, and Germany have all urged restraint and continued diplomatic efforts. Aggression and sledging, in my opinion, are not necessary components of sports. Sports are intended to test one's physical and mental endurance, not to encourage individuals to engage in brawls or altercations that result in scuffles. Sledging is considered legitimate by my opponents, but I believe that those who become violent and begin sledging do so because they do not comprehend the spirit of sports and sportsmanship. If you want to win a game, you must achieve so by talent or exceptional performance. Sledging is, in my opinion, an immoral and disgusting way to anger an opponent. My dear friends, I'd like to inquire whether sledging adds to the game's enjoyment. The mathematician John von Neumann experienced a type of stammering premonition in 1945, while exhausted. He was working on the atom bomb in Los Alamos when he told his wife Clary that the energy source he was helping to develop would turn scientists into the most hated and simultaneously the most wanted people of any society. Then he told her about his other continuing project, the computer which would become even more important and even dangerous in the future. Good biographies of some of the greatest mathematical minds are hard to come by, because they were polymaths, biographers who can explain their many accomplishments to the average person are few and far between.
TV news that strives for accuracy and speed is always at risk of falsifying its information in order to stay in circulation. The guiding premise for the 24-hour news format is that a news should be carried on the channel whether or not it has an aspect of worthiness. If there is nothing worth reporting, the content can be sensationalized for the sake of gaining popularity. It has a tendency to become monotonous and boring as scandals are allowed to become headlines and popularity becomes the primary goal. The aspiration of television news to be the single custodian of objective truth in the profession of journalism is a lofty claim, as it frequently becomes a platform for commercial advertising. The character of a nation's people determines its fate. Tomorrow's children are today's youngsters. Today's youngsters should not only be taught about essential values, but also encouraged to make a commitment to upholding them in real life through practice. It is the first basic phase in school instruction, when moral principles are instilled through a well-structured study of books. Because stories are secular in nature, they provide significant insight into all religions. Moral science not only aids in the installation of positive moral principles, but also aids in the differentiation of good from evil. It shapes our character, personality, and teaches us proper etiquette and manners, resulting in a happy and healthy life. The U.S. has announced that it will withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement. The United Nations has been informed, formally enforcing a decision made by President Trump in June. The State Department, on the other hand, stated that the United States will continue to participate in climate change discussions until the withdrawal process was finished. 
According to new research, weather-related calamities in Europe might kill more than 150,000 people per year by the end of the century. According to a European Commission research, heat waves are responsible for 99% of all weather-related deaths on the continent. Our country is democratic, and elections are the lifeblood of any democratic institution. Elections are held every five years in India. Elections were scheduled to be held last year to elect a new MLA. Candidates from various political parties were competing. The parties were canvassing for votes in support of their respective candidates. A father could be seen canvassing for one party while his son was canvassing for the other. All canvassing was halted the day before the election. The parties set their camp a short distance from the voting site. They possessed voter lists for their respective zones. Voters were flocking to the tents of their preferred political parties. They were being assisted by the personnel. The personnel assisted them in locating their serial numbers and provided them with ballot forms to aid them in voting. High worker turnover is unavoidable. Retention techniques must be reconsidered. Bosses did not have to worry as much about their workforces in the not-too-distant past. Newcomers could osmotically adopt the organizational culture. Workers' families were unseen, and Zoom calls were not continually interrupted. Employees were given a job but not a voice. Now, businesses must be purposeful, management language for considering everything from the location of the office to how employees communicate with one another. The most recent issue that requires attention is retention. The Great Resignation, a surge of employee departures, is centered in America, where a record 3% of the workforce resigned in September.
She predicts that if the distribution of women's employment matched that of men dash if women were doctors and men were nurses at best a third of the pay difference would be eliminated. The most essential reason is that women cut back on their careers as part of a reasonable household response to labor markets that lavishly reward everyone, male or female, who is prepared to work in a greedy job, as Ms. Golden describes it. These are jobs that require lengthy and irregular hours, such as those in law, accounting, and finance. Someone needs to be on call at home in case a child becomes ill and needs to be picked up from school or if a youngster needs to be cheered on at a performance or football game. I was lying in my bed last night, reading a ghost story, and I'm not sure when sleep overtook me. In my dream, I encountered an elderly gentleman who claimed to be a magician. He claimed to be able to compel ethereal spirits to do whatever he wanted. I made fun of him and even called him a fake. He became enraged with me. He raised his hand and spoke something unusual. Suddenly, a snake emerged in his hand, which he unleashed on me. I was terrified and tried to flee, but I couldn't get my feet off the ground. I yelled in terror. My father, who had been sleeping next to me, awoke. Father shook my hand and inquired about the situation. Then I informed him about my dreadful nightmare. Hi Bobby, how are you? I am good, what about you? I am fine, when do you get up in the morning? I always get up early in the morning, most of the time at 6 o'clock. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I can't do that, I am a bit worried. You can too, it is not that hard. If you do it for a couple of days, then it will be your habit. You just need to start. What is the benefit of early rising? First of all we get a long day to work more and enjoy our time. And then it has lots of health benefits too. What types of health benefits? When you wake up early, you will feel refreshed and your entire day will be so much lightened. If you go for a morning walk that will help you to do your physical exercises too. And it is highly important for having a strong body. Do you go for a morning walk regularly? 
Yeah. I go for it regularly with my father. I enjoy it too much. It has so much importance to our health. There are lots of rules of good health and it is one of the rules. Courtney Hammond, a blueberry and cranberry farmer in Washington County, Maine, has many concerns, as do many farmers. Weather, invasive species, failed crops, and worldwide prices are all on his mind. To comply with federal food safety regulations, he had to undergo training, keep detailed records, implement bug and rodent control measures, and document the sanitation of his processing equipment on a regular basis. I don't have to worry about anyone getting sick from eating anything that leaves my farm, he says, despite the fact that it's a lot of effort. He is now concerned that a new law may jeopardize his hard work. Earlier this month, 61% of Maine voters approved a constitutional amendment ensuring that all Mainers have a right to food. One of the most crucial parts of every relationship is trust. Medicine treats a person's physical disease, but trust and caring aid mental recovery. When it comes to you, a trustworthy individual will be dependable and honest. They will not lie, steal, cheat, lose their devotion to something, or abandon you over insignificant concerns. The words integrity, honesty, reliability, and loyalty come to mind when describing trustworthiness. Integrity means having faith in yourself and standing up for your values. If there is no trust between husband and wife, parents and children, friends and neighbors, etc., life will be difficult. It is impossible to regain trust after it has been lost. Life may go on after trust is lost, but the frayed edge will always be obvious.
A £10 prize was given to anyone who could provide information regarding Oliver's parents. However, no valuable information was found. Oliver was transported to a nearby poor farm, where he spent his early years being neglected and starved. He was returned to the workhouse when he was nine years old. The children in the workhouse were fed so little that they were practically constantly hungry. Other children forced Oliver to request a second dish of oatmeal one day. This unexpected and unprecedented demand astounded the officials. They put him in solitary prison right away to give him a deterrent punishment and posted a bill offering five pounds to any master who would take him. For food delivery companies, the European market is a difficult landscape. In the last few years, Delivery Hero has had a good run. It ascended to the DAX, the stock market index of Germany's most valued listed companies, in August 2020. It can be found in 50 different countries across four continents. The third quarter's revenue was 1.8 billion euros, $2 billion up 89% from the same time in 2020. We grew 100% before Corona, 100% during Corona, and 100% after Corona, says Niklas Ostberg, the Swedish chief executive of the Berlin-based corporation. Delivery Hero is more than twice as big as DoorDash, a major American competitor, in terms of order volume. Despite the fact that attention is essential for learning, it is difficult to achieve. It is a technique that requires a great deal of patience and effort to master. Whoever masters it is a true yogi. Controlling our senses and bringing all of our consciousness into one place is no easy undertaking. Life is complex, and there are always multiple situations clamoring for our attention, making it even more difficult to concentrate on just one subject. Even if we try to focus completely on the task at hand, our subconscious mind is scattered in many areas and quickly drags our conscious mind along with it without our knowledge. As a result, 
it necessitates a great deal of self-control and determination. Excuse me, is this seat free? Yes. Thanks. My name is Mrs. Smith. It is nice to meet you. Hi, Mrs. Smith. My name is Mr. Bean. It's nice to meet you, too. Where are you from, Mr. Bean? You sound like you're not from England. I am from Thailand. I have been visiting my family in Manchester. How about you? Same as every day at this time on my way to work, as usual. What do you do? I am an English teacher. My students love learning English. How about you? I am also an English teacher, but I'm on holiday right now. A wrong conduct should be immediately apologized for, whether it was done consciously or unknowingly. The longer an apology is postponed, the more distant a relative becomes, and the friendship or relationship may dissolve permanently. In some circumstances, such as in terms of health or machine repair, deferring an action can be disastrous. A cold or a runny nose if untreated can develop into sinusitis, and a severe cough can develop into tuberculosis. Neglecting a physical ache could result in a lethal malignancy. Similarly, a vehicle malfunction can cause, if not an accident, at least a delay in reaching a destination, as it can break down in the middle of the journey.
The term African American literature refers to the body of literature published by people of African heritage in the United States. African American literature originated in the latter half of the 18th century, when certain members of the community used literature to convey their thoughts and feelings, because it accurately depicted the various ups and downs in these people's personal, social, cultural, and political life. The history of African American literature can even be considered the history of African Americans in America. Though it wasn't until the 1970s that this writing was generally praised for its depth, it had been lurking beneath the surface of American mainstream literature for more than two centuries. The slogan was coined by the press officer of the Royal Court Theatre to promote John Osborne's 1956 drama Look Back in Anger. Their bitterness and impatience were heightened by what they saw as the upper and middle classes' hypocrisy and mediocrity. They were both openly critical of the British class system, its historic network of pedigreed families, and the aristocratic Oxford and Cambridge institutions. Their writings regularly conveyed visceral rage and disgust as post-war reforms failed to achieve exalted ambitions for meaningful change, and they exhibited an equally unfettered scorn for the drabness of the post-war welfare state. Kangaroos rely heavily on their tails. It keeps them balanced and provides support when they sit or fight with other kangaroos. The kangaroo's short legs serve as arms. When it eats leaves, it uses them to scratch itself, clean its fur, and hold branches. Kangaroos are marsupials that have a pouch in front of their abdomens where they carry their young. The offspring are born little and climb inside the pouch for protection. They feed, sleep, and grow there for the next 225 days or so. They leave the pouch once they have reached full development. A joey is a young kangaroo that has left the pouch. The kangaroos take afternoon naps and conduct most of their work in the morning to avoid being too hot.
Jack Kerouac coined the term Beat Generation to describe a perceived underground, anti-conformist youth movement in New York. Within the African-American community of the time, the adjective beat meant tired or beaten down, and had evolved from the image beat to his socks, but Kerouac appropriated the image and changed the meaning to include the connotations upbeat, beatific, and the musical association of being on the beat. The origins of the beat generation may be traced back to Columbia University's campus. This movement's adherents include Allen Ginsberg, Gary Snyder, Lawrence Ferling Hetty, and Gregory Corso, who resisted conventional politics and culture's viewpoint. A large tow truck worked on Saturday to remove the charred remnants of a burned-out oil tanker that exploded in a spectacular blaze outside Sierra Leone's capital. Reuters' David Doyle has further information. According to Deputy Health Minister Amara Jambai, the dead toll has risen to 99, with over 100 patients being treated in hospitals and clinics across Freetown. Brimabure Saise, the chairman of the National Disaster Management Agency, stated in a video from the site, we've got so many casualties, burned corpses, and added, it's a terrible, awful accident. The amount of the damage caused by Friday's explosion is unknown, according to Freetown's mayor, who added that police and her deputy were on the scene to assist disaster management officials. Sudanese security forces opened fire on demonstrators in Khartoum and other parts of the country on Saturday, killing at least five people and injuring many more. Four persons were killed by bullets and one suffocated by tear gas in Khartoum and Umdurman on Saturday, according to the Sudan Doctors Committee. A number of other protesters were hurt, including by bullets. The protests took place two days after Sudan's interim governing body. The Sovereign Council was reappointed by military coup leader General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan. The pro-democracy alliance was enraged by the move, as were the U.S. and other countries that had pushed the military to reverse its coup and restore civilian authority.
Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.